For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus. Good morning. My name is Corina Herrera Loera, Public Information Officer here for the Emergency Operations Center in Santa Clara County. We will take off our mask just during the segment so that you can understand us more clearly and ASL can interpret for us. Today, uh, we will be uh, talking about holiday safety guidance and staying up to date with multi-language information. Uh, we have Ricardo Romero Morales, who's our lead information officer uh, here today with us. Um, and before we go into questions with Ricardo, uh, I would like to let you all know that here at our Emergency Operations Center, we have uh, around the clock staff working to get the latest information out to our county um, community. And all the information can be found on our website. And since March of this year, we have uh, a language access team comprised of 15 people working every day to ensure our Spanish speaking, Vietnamese speaking, Tagalogs, Chinese, and American Sign Language community members can access our information and get the latest updates. Our website has been translated in multiple languages, as mentioned, and uh, we you know, we have many languages in our community, but we know that those are the five most commonly spoken languages and we're growing as we go. The language access team also film, films multi-language uh, public information, uh, public service announcements, and the most up-to-date information. Uh, plus, we have weekly radio shows in Chinese and Vietnamese as well. Uh, and so now to go into our questions with Ricardo, thank you for being here. Welcome again. Thank you, Corina, uh, good morning. Good morning. Let's start off with uh, some of our communities are, you know, um, unfortunately still considering traveling, right, um, for the holidays. What would, you, what would you say to them if they're still considering the travel? We want to let you know that uh, cases here of COVID-19 are increasing in Santa Clara County. We're seeing over 400 cases a day of COVID-19 uh, case, uh, COVID cases. So we are urging you to cancel your travel plans. We know that uh, we all want to go see our family, visit our loved ones, get away for a week. Uh, but at this point, we are strongly urging you to cancel your travel plans. We care about you, we care about your loved ones, and we care about the community. If you must travel, if you must, we are reminding you to continue to wear your face covering during your travels, maintain more than six feet apart, making sure that you alert people that you're going to go visit them before you show up to their place. And also uh, make sure that you are able to self quarantine once you return. And also make sure that you're getting a flu shot before you leave. Thank you. And would you say there are some activities that put someone at higher risk of COVID-19? In terms of activities that can put uh, somebody at risk of COVID-19 uh, include no maintaining social distance. In this case would be spending time with people without a face covering, less than six feet apart, mixing different households, gathering indoors, uh, and, just may, and just not following the guidelines that the county have been putting in place. Thank you. As you mentioned, you know, COVID-19 is very real in our community. Our numbers are, you know, higher than they've been. Um, and I know a lot of uh, youth are coming back from college. You know, it's kind of inevitable traveling, but at the same time, you know, maybe they can say you just uh, never know, but sometimes there is, as you mentioned, inevitable traveling. Can you tell us if we have that in our families, what can we do? Can you remind us? If you're coming home, uh, we are recommending that you self quarantine for 14 days and get tested around day seven. Make sure that you get a flu shot and please, please, please continue your, to wear your face covering and maintain more than six feet apart. Thank you. Uh, and unfortunately, as you know, we see the numbers, you know, even though we have these directives, some people are still not following. Um, and some, you know, are essential workers and have to travel. Can you tell us about the different modes of traveling and how to travel if we have to travel, whether it's by car or public transportation or travel? If, if, you, if you're traveling outside the Bay Area, we're recommending it that you travel by car with people that you live with. At this point, uh, if you mix somebody uh, from a different household, uh, we're trying to let you know that that could be a high-risk activity and make sure that you are rolling down those windows 
Uh, the purpose of that is because we want air to flow, fresh air to flow th through the vehicle, which will decrease the chances of contracting COVID-19. Thank you. Now, can you remind us of those that are uh, at higher risk of serious illness? Uh, can you remind us of who, who those people could be? Absolutely. So people who are at higher risk, uh, at this point, everybody can be exposed to COVID-19. Uh, and the symptoms vary from mild to severe. Uh, however, people who have medical exis existing medical conditions uh, or people who are over the age of 65 could be people who can get it the worst and who can get uh, even hospitalized. We're also seeing a high number of hospitalizations here in Santa Clara County. And if we continue to, to see these hospitalizations going up at this rate, our hospitals will be reaching capacity in less than three weeks. Now, is there an area to look, for example, I mentioned, you know, some of our children are coming back from college, et cetera. Is there somewhere that people can look to see if there's certain areas with higher number of cases, um, you know, in regards to traveling, uh, or even, you know, the, the child coming home and then going back? Is there somewhere where people can look at to see and compare the cases of where they're visiting? Yes, yeah, so they should be visiting uh, their local website uh, at the public health department of the destination that they're going to be visiting. Uh, it is important for them to know whether COVID-19 is spreading uh, in the places that they're visiting if they're traveling. But again, I want to emphasize that we are recommending for people to cancel their travel plans. Uh, in this case, make sure that you know how severe the situation is at your destination. Thank you. Therefore, we're also recommending for people to quarantine once they are, come back to the Bay Area, once they come back home, uh, and make sure that they also get tested around day seven and get a flu shot. Thank you. So remember, quarantine. And a lot of us don't have that time, so stay home. Um, what recommendations do you have for holiday gatherings still? You know, people are still calling their family members, trying to figure out what they're going to do. What recommendations do you have for them? So we're reminding people that the best way or the best practice is to uh, celebrate with people that they live with, people who they live under the same household, that they can cook a dinner together. They could also do virtual dinners with larger family members who are, do not live in the same household. Now, if they want to do a gathering, uh, this is moderate risk. We are recommending for it to happen outdoors with no more than three households. And this is including uh, your own household. So you can invite up to two more households. And just remember to keep it outdoors, keep it short, no more than two hours. Make sure that you continue to wear your face covering and maintain your, uh, your social distance of more than six feet. We also recommending it to keep it stable. So uh, don't go to multiple to our gatherings outdoors during uh, during the holidays. Thank you. Um, any other general information about how our community can maintain safety during this time, especially since our numbers are going up at an alarming rate? It is alarming. We are seeing uh, an increase of cases as we have never seen them before. And we are asking you not to lower your guard. This is a time to protect ourselves, to protect our loved ones and to protect our community. And the way that we can do that is by continuing to wear our face coverings, maintaining our social distancing of more than six feet, and also remember that outdoors is safer than indoors. Please avoid traveling as much as possible, and please do not gather with people that you don't live with. Thank you. Now, um, we know Black Friday is coming up. We like to shop. You know, some of us look forward to that day all year long. Um, can you tell us what the county is recommending around that? What are some of the best practices? Yes. So as I continue to mention, and uh, I, I'm saying it over and over just because I want people to know this, is that uh, cases and hospitalizations are rising dramatically here in Santa Clara County. Uh, we are seeing over 400 new COVID-19 cases per day. So that is alarming. Uh, and in efforts to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our community, we ask people to shop online during Black Friday. Uh, this will help avoid uh, gatherings uh, at the shopping centers, at the malls, at the grocery stores. 
And let's also remember that we are in the purple tier. And what that means is that we now have limitations, capacity limitations. So it's 25% capacity in retail stores and 25 capacity also applies to malls and 50% capacity to grocery stores. Now, um, the, uh, the compliance unit or the compliance team will be going out during Black Friday to check on those businesses uh, who are not being compliant with the capacity limitations uh, directive or with the social distancing protocol. We will be issuing fines to those businesses who are not being compliant. And because this is, uh, Black Friday is one of those events that can lead to a super spreader event, there will not be a grace period. People will be fined and they will have to pay the amount. And this can range from $250 to $5,000. Again, there will not be a grace period and we're urging people to please help us identify those businesses as well uh, by calling our business call center at 408-961-5500. They can also visit a, our portal to file a complaint and that is sccovidconcerns.org and there they can also file a complaint uh, to report a business. Now, we have been saying that education is our first approach. This right here and the media coverage that we've been doing about around Black Friday is your education component to Black Friday. During Black Friday day, we will be issuing fines. So please, please be safe. And uh, also as a reminder for people, uh, people who work with the compliance unit, they have uh, their own county badge so they can identify themselves. And we will never ask you for cash or we will never ask you for your credit card information or uh, your personal information such as your social security number or your ID number. So, and also if you have questions about whether somebody does work for the county, you can always call our business call center to verify their identity. And that phone number again is the 408-961-5500. Also, Corina, we want to remind our community that we're doing all of this effort and taking all of these steps to ensure that everybody's safe and healthy. We want everyone to have a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you for you know coming again and keeping us updated. Um, and I want to uh, express my deepest gratitude to our language access team again, um, you know, who worked so hard to get, you know, these Facebook lives in the various languages, uh, the different um, radio shows, public service announcements, media interviews, translate the documents, newsletters, um, to meet everyone's needs. We're doing our best to get the information out in all the languages that I mentioned. Um, and we are going to be closing today. Uh, our team put together a slideshow of our members of the Language Access team. Remember, there's about 15 of us. Uh, we didn't get to have everybody on the slideshow, uh, but we do want to give our gratitude to all of the team. Thank you so much. For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus.